so this talk is about vulnerable code and uh, why vulnerability database should not really be about vulnerabilities. Let me quickly uh, show you what I mean. Uh, first of all, why I mean anything? Who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Ritik Vijay, and uh, I'm a fast developer whenever I can be. I am a co-maintainer at uh, Vulnerable Code and a product security engineer at CRED. So I, whatever I build, I also consume that as a security engineer. So I know the pain points of whatever the uh, product that we are building is to the consumers itself. Let's quickly jump into supply chain vulnerabilities. What is a supply chain vulnerability, right? So let's say you are building a software, and this entire chain is your uh, supply chain. And this is your final Hello World app. And uh, over there in your supply chain, you have a dependency called log4j. Now, you have no idea if uh, this is going to be vulnerable or not. And I suppose during log4j, some of you did have problems with mitigating it, or maybe you had problems with security teams coming to you, hey, remove it. But just finding that log4j, where is it? And then patching it, that, is, that, is, that was a nightmare for the entire industry. We already know that. And uh, being in open source, uh, we already consume a lot of open source. So supply chain increases like a lot. And it's hard to detect, and it goes unnoticed as well. So how do we find out there is a supply chain vulnerability? There is any vulnerability. How do you find out any vulnerability? You look at the vulnerability database. So you might have heard of NVD, that is a vulnerability database. You might have heard of uh, OSV or et cetera, vulnerability databases that provides you a list of vulnerabilities, right? That maps to every package that is vulnerable, or it seems like it does. The problem with these databases are they focus mostly on the vulnerability. So CV1234, they'll just write it down. CV1234. It's vulnerable to what? Package A, B, or maybe they'll say a version. Package A, version 1. Or maybe they'll say package A, version 1 to 5. Now it could be 1 to 5, excluding 4. Like there are lots of ranges that you might encounter while looking at a particular CVE or any vulnerability. But the versioning is very, very, very not clear. Even in NBD datasets, if you look at, it's, uh, it's, it's manually crafted and uh, not properly vetted. So the prime citizen over there is the vulnerability itself. And then packages come next. You find out, okay, this is log for shell vulnerability. Now you, it comes, where is the package log for shell? It, sometimes it's even contradictory. We have found out uh, GitHub advisories, which, is, uh, which provides uh, some, uh, again, vulnerability database. But sometimes it contradicts with the data given from NVD. Uh, there was a recent incident from uh, libcurl, the curl command that he used. And uh, the curl maintainer said, hey, this is not a vulnerability at all. But NVD, being NVD, they published that vulnerability at a high severity and very, very critical vulnerability. And then uh, curl maintainer said, hey, what, what is this? This is my product, and it's not a vulnerability. It's not, it's not a severe vulnerability. So there are contradictions. So upstream is always right. The maintainer is right, not the database producer. Other databases that, let's just not name them, but they are closed source. And uh, maintaining an open source inventory uh, using a closed source software is already uh, problematic, uh, you can guess. because they will not tell you how they are figuring out the vulnerabilities and the associated packages. You have no insight. You don't really know how it is working. You just take their word for granted, and uh, you say that it's vulnerable, then it's vulnerable. If it's not, you move on. And there's no insight. So it's a poison. Plus noise. You see that person? He is surrounded by everything inside the world. As a developer, if someone tells you, hey, 1,000 packages are vulnerable, but you are using just three packages. But those three have four more packages, dependency, so on and so forth. Now, 1,000 packages, how will you find out which are vulnerable or not? You are surrounded by noise. You will just ignore all of them, including log4j as well. So what do we do? What do we? OK. So what do we do in case of uh, vulnerable code? How is our database different than other existing databases. We have packages as first class citizens, not vulnerabilities. So what you ask is, I have this package, foo, at version one. 
now tell me how many vulnerabilities are there in this particular package don't tell me there is a new cv 1 2 3 4 and then i have to find out the vulnerability uh, sorry the packages that it is affecting give me the package right and give me a direct mapping from package to vulnerability then i can get a exhaustive list of packages that i have and look at the cvs advisories if there is a fix for upgrade or downgrade sometimes upgrade is a problem but downgrade works so what we do over here is we give you package first how does it work old we used to have packages the way of saying uh, first class citizen saying package uh, requires a first class identifier don't you think if you have vulnerabilities as first class citizens they have cves ghss multiple identifiers and there is one way to pinpoint them but how do you pinpoint one package right you say package requests version 1 type pypy ecosystem this uh, uh, maybe uh, this platform this architecture this then finally your uh, subsystem this and you keep on saying out the list this is not a really a uh, standard way of doing things and you will have lots of complications so uh, gluing up different tools the new way of doing this is using package urls and this is how it looks you provide the package name then pypy is uh, the type of the package where it is coming from and then request add the version there is an exhaustive way of representing every package out there and this is decentralized as well it's not that there is one authority that is giving package names for every package you can derive your name depending on the package parameters as you can see it over here what's even better we also have some service that's uh, you can see pearl.fyi if you have a package url you just append that package url to this and you will go to the package home page as simple as that so how easy is it now to communicate a package to say log4j is not enough you have to say log4j version 2 subsystem this platform amd runs in fedora arch everything matters right so instead of saying that sentence you say this line and this is the standard way of doing things this started in vulnerable code and scan code itself this has been already adopted by cyclone dx spdx google oss app threat microsoft has bound tool and lots of products and this is already a standard for representing a single package so let's keep on using this right and if you'd like to learn more have a look at package url when you have a package what are you more interested in let's find out all the packages that are there in the world right so i have requests maybe there is sct believe there are other packages so let's find let's create a database of all the packages in all the ecosystems everything that exists everywhere this so sounds daunting but we are already doing it at perl db we are maintaining a database of perl and perl is package url this entire thing that we talked about was package url so now we have a entire hierarchy and entire uh, dependency graph for every package and it is a uh, partially work in progress but right now it works at some levels so you have everything about a package at vulnerable code we don't do any lazy resolution what do i mean with that with vulnerability first databases that provides a cv what they'll do i am cv 1 2 3 4 i affect package 1 package 1 to 5 package 6 to 7 now this is the advisory you get now when you check which package is vulnerable or not you have to figure out this entire version range if let's say you have package version 2 at the runtime they try to figure out does 2 lie into 2 to 4 4 to 5 because vulnerabilities are first class citizens right the advisories are first class citizens so they try to find package on query time at vulnerable code what we do we store concrete packages we have a way of storing every package that you can fathom and uh, we store all those packages that are vulnerable to one given vulnerability. So CV1234 now does not affect 1 to 4. We tell you it affects 1, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 2, 3, maybe not 3, or maybe not 3.2, and then 5. We'll give you an entire exhaustive list so that you don't have to figure out what is greater than 1 means in NPM and what does it mean in PyPy. When you deal with uh, different ecosystems, it becomes a problem slowly. Of course, this has to have a standard as well, right? I can't say less than one, greater than one for every ecosystem when it is different. We came up with a different standard that's called WUS. We named it universe, that is universal version ranges. So for example, 
RPM has this weird notation. Now, PyPy, I don't think they have it. NPM has this. PyPy has this, but it might have a different meaning. How do you reconcile everything? How do you represent one given package range? When I say one to five for PyPy, I just want to represent in one way, not five different ways. So it's worse over here. I say PyPy and it's greater than equal to five, less than one, and also not equal to point eight. You can represent any range over here. And the way right now becomes is everything looks like a symbol and uh, you have one standard way of representing package ranges as well. This is uh, a small uh, quick look of how it uh, feels like. I have a verse 0 0.0.5, less than one and uh, not equal to 0.8. Now we check if PyPy version 0 0.0.5 in verse. Yeah, it is. Is 0.8 there? No, because we have explicitly disallowed this. Without this, it would have been there because it lies in this range. And uh, final 0 0.11.1, no again, because it flows out of this range. So now you have one standard way of representing verse. Verse is being considered at many levels. This is not a very uh, popular standard yet, but we are trying to push this standard so that you can represent package versions with simplicity and not uh, sometimes caret, sometimes still less, sometimes greater than, sometimes God knows what sign. So some specific set of signs with some spe specific set of libraries. What happens when we bring all of this together? I start with a, we start with a data source. So that data source might be, uh, let's say an advisory, uh, or maybe uh, let's consider the libcurl example. So that libcurl example is, uh, curl is the data source, the maintainer is the data source. They provide an advisory, that is a CV, and advisories have identifier CV, there might be different identifiers, but just for sake of completeness, let's have CV as an advisory. Then every advisory will tell you packages one to five are vulnerable except six and seven to eight are fixed except five. These things, these things we can easily cover using the standard called verse, the universe that we uh, just discussed. So verse is the specification and uh, universe is the implementation of that spec in Python. And then when we have verse, when we can represent package ranges, version ranges, now it's very easy, right, to get exact concrete packages. When I can easily represent for every ecosystem about package ranges, I can tell you that uh, one to five is there, six to seven is there, then one, two, three, four, five, I can enumerate from the upstream. I will go to the upstream, figure out if these versions exist, and then enumerate them, then I'll have package URLs. And all of this goes into vulnerable code. So now we have package first citizen. And we moved from making this as a first citizen from this as a first class citizen. And this makes a lot of difference. But why trust me? Why trust my word? You would like to compare things, tweak things around and do what not what, or who knows what. We also made a comparison engine for vulnerability database. This is highly work in progress, but uh, we have some POC working at this URL. What it does is, it will, have you heard of virus total? Um, maybe you have, maybe you have not. What it does, if you provide one malware or one URL, it will scan that against 10 or 20 antiviruses. And if one flags it, it will tell others. And this way you have a list of uh, antiviruses, antiviruses that are detecting a given malware. Why not have something for CVs, right? libcurl have a CE and it says curl version 1.2 is affected. Now how many databases are saying that? Let's have a representation of that. And that is what we are doing at one total. So figuring out the dis differences in all the different vulnerability database out there. And this will slowly prove to me that vulnerable code is obviously the best, but we'll see. Uh, I'm getting cues right now. So there are lots to discuss on this matter. As you might have seen, we have discussed two uh, new standards. Package URL is highly adopted. Uh, Verse is trying to be adopted. Then we have vulnerable code that thinks totally different about vulnerability and package and supply chain security. We have lots to discuss on this and this much of time is obviously not enough. Let's have a talk over here, over here, over here, over here, wherever you would like to. You want to try out vulnerable code? Go to this public instance, public.vulnerablecode.io. You will have the uh, public instance over there. Thanks our entire community for making this possible. And with this, thank you so much.
we actually don't have time for questions so if you have any i'll be just outside the room and we can talk uh, separately thank you